Good afternoon. Uh, it is now 3 o'clock p.m. and this public hearing is called to order. In accordance with open government law, public notices of this hearing were sent to all main media outlets, all senators and stakeholders on October 12, 2018 and October 17, 2018. Uh, I'd like to remind everyone to please ensure that uh, you sign in if you'd like to give testimony. Uh, last time we, uh, we didn't get all the names for our last testimony, so uh, we had some concerned citizens about that. So please make sure you sign in and uh, my, my team will alert me uh, that you'd like to give testimony. I'd also like to thank uh, Senator Will Castro, who is the primary sponsor for the bill, and Senator Joseph Augustine, who is the co-sponsor. Thank you for attending. On our agenda this afternoon, we have the following bill. Bill number 332-34, introduced by Senator Will Castro and Senator Joe S. St. Augustine. An act to add a new subsection 849.13 to Article 1, Chapter 8 of Title 1 of the Guam Code Annotated, relative to naming and dedicating the Sinahanya Central Precinct as, a lieutenant, as the Lieutenant Conception Connie Balahaja Duenas Police Station. I'd like to uh, ask Senator Castro if he'd like to speak on behalf of this bill, and then we will call uh, those who would like to give testimony for it. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, first of all, thank you for the support. And if uh, my co-sponsor here would have no reservations in the future, I'd like to go ahead and amend the bill to include your name. I really thank you for the support. Uh, sort of as a prelude, uh, I want to publicly acknowledge uh, that the idea was seated in a conversation and the lieutenant governor and others uh, in that conversation and communication we were talking about some folks who were deserving in our community worthy of different types of recognitions for having you know blazed their trail and of course in the context of that conversation uh, the late mayor's name came up and and before i get into the depth and the substance of the bill you know i just wanted to say that you know, we reflect and we look at places like George Washington High School or John F. Kennedy High School. And I don't know, but growing, growing up, you look from afar and say, wow, you know, okay, I get it. You know, JFK was this illuminary in history who really did a lot for the world and for the United States. And then, then it gets, you could take it local and you look at the late Jesus Baza Duenas for which Father Duenas Memorial High School was established. But never, never in my I wish I was a young mind, but never in my, my life would I ever have thought that I would have come across the opportunity to realize that taking a moment in time and freezing it to acknowledge people who have made a lasting impact in our lives, you know, to, to memorialize their, their contribution to society is so real in people like the late Connie Duenas. I'm humbled. And I don't know, but it was just, just this one experience that allowed me to realize the magnitude of taking that step forward. You know, it's beyond any, it's, be, it's beyond politics, Madam Chair, and I, I am moved, I am humbled. I almost did not know how to approach this as simple, as, as perfunctory as putting a bill together, con constructing a, a naming bill together. But when you read and you shape the, the language that goes into why we want to do what we want to do, it's profound. And so I'd just like to take another minute, Madam Chair, just to highlight on some of the things that the late Connie Balahaja Duenas accomplished in her lifetime. Mm -hmm. uh, it's important for other women in the community to see that she was a trailblazer in many ways. I'm sure some testimony will affirm this. You know, she was the first woman to have attained and retired the rank of lieutenant. She worked for uh, former senators, uh, the late Ed, or I'm sorry, Senator Duenas and the late Speaker Antonio Reyes Ampinco. She served as a mayor and vice mayor, and she served on multiple boards and advisory commissions. And so this bill attempts to pay tribute to Lieutenant Connie Duenas' um, contribution to the law enforcement community, Madam Chair. I'm sure the people here and others who submitted testimony want to sing her praises, so I'll reserve that for my colleagues and, and for those who are here today. Thank you, ma'am. I'd also like to recognize the presence of Speaker Talahi. Thank you for coming, Speaker. Um, I'll call out the names and please feel free to come forward. Uh, Lydia Tenorio, Brianna Duenas, 
Harold Cruz, uh, Chief of Police J.I. Cruz, Rico Chrysostomo, and Major Chung, Manny Chung. Ms. Tenorio, we can start with you. Police Chief, we'll start with you. Madam Chair, Senator Castro, Senator San Augustine, Speaker Terlahi, Magofanids, and Hoffa Day, I am Joseph Cruz, the Chief of Police for the Guam Police Department. On behalf of the Guam Police Department, I am submitting this testimony in support of Bill 332 34, an act to add a new subsection 849.13 to Article 1, Chapter 8 of Title 1 of the Guam Code Annotated, relative to naming and dedicating the the Sinanya or Central Precinct as the Lieutenant Conception Connie Balahaja Duenas Police Station. The police officers of the Guam Police Department and the, and the former Department of Public Safety have long been recognized as the most visible arm of government with the primary purpose of providing a social service through the maintenance of law and order. As the very first policewoman, Lieutenant Connie Duenas broke new ground for gender equality at a time when the government of Guam was new and women were still regarded as the center of home and family and life and not the workplace. The Guam Police Department maintains a women's advisory network that supports all women in the department, both sworn and civilian support staff, and enjoys participation in the regional network, the Pacific Island Chiefs of Police, Police Women's Advisory Network. The mission of the PICP-1 is to support and enhance the contributions of men and uh, women in policing within the Pacific region. The primary achievements of the PICP-1 have been a women's advisory network exchange program that commenced in 2008 and has averaged six two-week exchanges per year. A women's advisory network annual conference, the 12th annual conference in in 2015, hosted by the New Zealand Police Department. The Australian Institute of Police Management Scholarships and Leadership and Executive Programs, a mentoring program, a Pacific Seconded Officers Program, numerous leadership workshops, and a quarterly PICP Women's Advisory Network newsletter. Today, women in policing enjoy the achievements of pioneers like Lieutenant Duenas, whose record speaks clearly about the perseverance and community service. Lieutenant Duenas committed 20 years of law enforcement service and continued public service as a staffer in the legislature and later as elected vice mayor and mayor of the Tumuning, Tumon, and Harmon municipalities. Lieutenant Duenas' public service record is inspirational for all women who seek to achieve success as a leader in service to their community. Therefore, on behalf of the Guam Police Department, we are all in support of this bill and re respectfully request the recommendations mentioned herewith be considered and included in your record. Before I conclude my remarks, uh, as I read through the bill, it had indicated that the precinct will be completed in the fall of 2018. Uh, just earlier today, uh, at my weekly command and staff meeting, we got an update from the precinct commander, uh, Captain Steve Ignacio, that the precinct will actually not be uh, ready until sometime in the spring, sometime in January or February. So for the record, I'd just like to put it out that the precinct will be completed in around that time frame. But once again, we are supportive of this bill to rename uh, the precinct, um, the Lieutenant Connie uh, Duenas Precinct. Thank you for this opportunity to provide testimony this afternoon. At this point, I'm subject to any questions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Cruz. Major Chung? Yes, I'll, I'll make this short and sweet. Okay, uh, for the second uh, person in command with the Guam Police Department, I do support this bill. I did have uh, several instances uh, when I was uh, still out on the road where I worked with uh, Connie Duenas when she was the mayor with uh, all the different events held down in the Tumont Tumuning area and also uh, major incidents uh, that happened. She's a great woman and uh, uh, I believe that you know, this precinct uh, uh, you know, memorializes her greatness. Thank you. Mrs. Tenorio?
Good afternoon, um, Chairwoman Nelson, uh, Senator Castro, Senator San Agustin, and Speaker Chalahi. I'm Lydia Diaz Tenorio. I'm actually a friend and family, a friend of the family. I was asked to be here uh, to present on behalf of uh, uh, some friends and families that are unable to be present here. Um, I'm sure that they're at this moment watching uh, live streaming. Uh, I'm not just a family member, I also had the opportunity to have grown up in the village of Timuning, to have grown up around the uh, Mrs. Duenas and the family. I'm a childhood friend. I've known her since I was a little girl till uh, the day that she unfortunately had passed on. So I remain committed to being really, really good friends with the family. I'm honored to be here today uh, to speak on behalf of the family. So I, what I have are written uh, testimonies, which I understand have already been submitted. So I will be reading verbatim, if you don't mind. Okay. So the first um, testimony is from one of her daughters, Miss um, Eleanor uh, Legaspi. Uh, and so she says, Hafiday, my name is Eleanor Legaspi, uh, Connie Duenas' second daughter of her four children. I would like to share some things about my mother as you consider bill number 332-34. Connie served as policewoman for 26 years at the Guam Police Department. Connie retired as a lieutenant in 1976. She was the first female policewoman to be an officer. Connie loved her job as a policewoman. Growing up, I watched my mother get ready for the work in the morning, putting on her policewoman's uniform. She took pride wearing her uniform. In or out of her uniform, she helped everyone who sought help from her. After her retirement, Connie continued a life of public service. She served as the vice mayor of Timuning from 1997 to 2001 then elected as the mayor from 2001 to 2005. Connie was also an advocate for the Guam Police Department, victims advocate reaching out Vero. She served as president of Vero and was a founding member of this nonprofit volunteer organization. Vero provides services to victims and families of domestic violence, sexual assault, and traumatic events. I remember my mother telling me that she was available 24 seven to assist with females who were victims of sexual assault or domestic abuse. She was there for the victims at the hospital or at the police department to comfort them and reassure them that someone cared for them. Just like her duties as a policewoman, she was prepared to call, be called on, at any time. I would like to share this one event. It was December 29th, some time ago. It was Connie's birthday that day. We celebrated her birthday with family and some of her friends and coworkers. The party was in full swing when a Guam police, duty, police officer came to whisk my mother away to be in a stakeout that required a female officer. There are many memories like this that I experienced growing up. I also remember that her duties as a policewoman made her family do a lot of praying that she would return home safely after her duty. There were times when five o'clock in the afternoon came and went and Connie did not come home. She was out protecting the citizens of our island. Connie served as a longtime board member of the Guam Parole Board. As a parole board member, she was fair and always listened to both sides. She performed her duties with care and compassion. I want to thank the 34th Guam Legislative, Senator William Castro and Senator Joe San Agustin, who introduced this bill, and the Committee on Housing, Utilities, Public Safety, and Homeland Security for considering this bill. This will be an honor to have the Guam Police, Sinahanya Central Precinct, named after my mother, Conception Connie Balahaja Duenas. Um, Suzuz Maasi Eleanor Legaspi. A second testimony is, uh, as I will read, is from her other daughter, Kathy Solovowski, the oldest daughter of Connie Duenas. Thank you to the 34th Guam Legislature and committee members for taking the time to consider Bill Number 332-34 and hear family and friends share their thoughts of Connie Duenas. Who was Connie Duenas? She was a daughter who helped her parents raise her eight siblings. She was also a loving mother of four children. Most important, she was the rock, pillar, and foundation of the entire extended family. She chose a career in law enforcement and became the first female police officer and retired as a lieutenant. She was dedicated to her work as police officer who had a passion to help people. She was not only a police officer at heart, but a woman with many attributes. She cared deeply for the island community and for the people of Guam. As I was growing up, I remember my mom was always on the go helping people of all walks of life. After leaving Guam, I would come back to visit. Whenever I was out with my mom running errands to help other people, of course we would run into people who knew her and they would rave about what a good person she was. So many people have told me that my mother made an impact in their lives. After her funeral, I was at a public health 
I was at public health getting her death certificate, and this one person kept staring at me. Finally, she said, you look familiar. I mentioned who my mom was, and right away she said, your mom gave my family a chance in life. What a beautiful thing to hear after just losing my mom's life. My mom was hospitalized back in September 2016. While there, I was helping her recover from surgery by having her walk the halls of the third floor ward at GMH. There was a homeless lady that was hospitalized as well, sitting in her wheelchair out in the hall. As soon as she saw my mom, her face lit up and was happy to see the mayor, as she called my mom. She kept telling me that my mom was the best mayor who was always there for the people. When my mom was at dialysis, she would often times ask me to go to the truck food vendor up by GMH. She told me, just tell the guy there you want to order Connie's way. I went there and the order was made without any questions asked. Connie, my mother, helped this individual get a permit to pursue his business in order to support his family. My mom would help people out financially even when she did not have the funds. During one of our everyday phone calls, she told me that she bought a new pair of shoes for someone. And why, I asked. Her reply was that this person needed shoes for a job interview. That's who Connie Duenas was, helping someone in need to better their life. After retiring from the police department, my mother continued to pursue her passion to stay active in the community and more importantly, help people. She was a leader for the Victims Advocates Reaching Out program, Guma Mami, a member of the parole board and various nonprofit organizations. Whenever I traveled to Guam, I would meet other Guamanians at the airport. While exchanging what village we are from and talking about our family name, I would mention my mom's name, Connie Duenas, and right away people would say, oh, she's the policewoman or people would tell me how my mom helped me in some way. It was always good to hear positive remarks about, my, about her. The consideration of this bill would be a great honor to my mother for all the work and dedication she has put forth not only as a police officer, but a great community leader and servant. Naming the new central precinct in Sinahanya as the Lieutenant Conception Connie Balahaja Duenas Police Station will empower our children of today and tomorrow to strive show and practice compassion towards each other and to never give up. These are the things my mom believed in and with this, her legacy will live on. Thank you to Senator William Castro and Senator Joseph Augustine who introduced this bill and the Committee on Housing, Utilities, Public Safety and Homeland Security for considering this bill. If I may, I have one more from an, another um, daughter. Thank you to the 34th Guam Legislature and committee members for taking the time to consider Bill 332-34 and to hear family and friends share their thoughts on my mother. My mother, Connie Balahaja Duenas, also known as Conception Balahaja Duenas, also known as mayor, also known as policewoman, also known as public servant, also known as Miss Connie, also known as Miss D, also known as Mama Chonki, also known as Chong, also known as Christian mother, also known as Nana, also known as Nai Nai, also known as mom, also known as grandma, also known as Gigi, and stands for great grandma, and the list goes on and on for the many people that my mother has touched in her life. My name is Yvonne Duenas Arceo, the third daughter. I'm here to make a statement in honor of my mother because I feel that she dedicated her life as being the first and foremost a policewoman and public servant. There are, these are the very words I heard from her growing up. I am a police officer, and police officers are public servants, so that means that I work for the people of Guam. I was so young then, did not understand my mother's work of, work of life. I thought it was only when you went to work from eight to five. This went on forever when she retired from the police force until the day she died. Being very young at the time, I used to get upset when she was on her missions, like going out to pick someone up who needed help and taking them to one of the government of Guam agencies to help them with whatever they needed help with. I remember her driving around in her little orange Volkswagen. She would always take her children with her to do these things for other people. I guess you could call my siblings and I public servants too, since the four of us were always with her. Sometimes these missions took all day and my mom would get headaches. There are times her missions took so long that we didn't even get to eat lunch because she would make sure her mission was completed. Imagine back then when there was only one lane going up north, one center lane, one lane going south. You can imagine the traffic after a long day doing her mission in Aganya. We were pretty exhausted, but this lady, my mother, Connie Duenas, would still get up the next day to do it all over again. I would get upset and ask myself, why can't these people do this on their own? I guess it was the moral support and the comfort that she gave to them. Of course, as time 
and years went by, my mother's health condition started to deteriorate. Her kidney was functioning at 5%, so she had to take dialysis treatment. Even while under dialysis, people would still come up to her and ask for help. There were times when she had a hard time breathing and I would get upset because she was sick. And why can't these people just stop and see that you are not, she is not well and they would still be asking for your help, I would ask my mother. She would say, it's okay, Agahu, my daughter, it's fine, I'm fine. I would remind her how she felt earlier, how she had a hard time breathing and she would say, it's okay, I'm fine now. Then she would go to this person and, and ditch me because I was the only one who picked her from dialysis. I remember this one incident. Someone called the house asking to speak to my mom. Of course, she was not home at the time, most likely out helping someone again. I asked who was calling and the reason for the call. The lady on the other end of the line whispered, there is a guy trying to break into my house. I said, why are you calling my mother and not 911? She said that my mom was the first person that popped into her mind. This kind of blew my mind because this was the kind of effect my mother had with other people. Of course, I told the lady to hang up and call 911. Before she did, she asked if I could call my mother to let her know. I told her I would let my mother know, but I would not endanger my mother's life by telling her to go down to your house if that is what you're expecting. Boy, if my mother was home at the time of that call, she would have gone to that lady's house on her own. I did, of course, inform my mother about the call and asked her why this lady called you up instead of the police. You know what she said to me? I am the police. My response to her was, but you have been retired for decades and you are no longer on the force. She responded back, even if I am no longer in the force, I will always be a policewoman. Even after she retired, she was still working as a volunteer for Varro under the Guam Police Department. I remember when the dogs were barking out loud at 3 a.m. in the morning. It was my mother responding to her pager because there was a rape victim at Guam Memorial Hospital who, was need who needed her presence uh, as a victim's advocate. So you see, this is the kind of person my mother was. She had the kind of effect on people and the community. She would put herself last and the people first. That was the kind of lady she was. The Department of Public Safety and the Guam Police Department was her life and in her heart and soul till the very end. The passing of the, this bill in honor of my mother, Connie Bullahaja Duenius, would be a great honor to my beloved mother and her legacy. Um, thank you to the senators and to the uh, committee. Honorable senators, my name is Brianna Duenius. I am the daughter of Conception B. Duenius. I am here before you in support of the Senate House Bill 332-24, naming and dedicating the Sinahania Central Precinct as Lieutenant Conception Connie Balahaja Duenius Police Station. My grandma was a true definition of beautiful. Not only was she beautiful because of her contagious smile, but she was genuinely beautiful because her heart was so pure. I am very compassionate, loving, and optimistic. Growing up, people would tell me, you're just like your grandma. I would laugh and brush it off because I knew there was no way possible for me nor anyone to walk even a mile in her shoes. I did not have the privilege to see my grandmother in a police uniform. However, seeing my grandma for the first time in uniform at, her fa at our family viewing brought the brightest smile to my face. This is how I choose to remember my grandma. The service my grandmother has done for the island of Guam and its people goes beyond any scale. My grandmother was strong in her faith. I like to believe she was a little piece of heaven on earth. To assure my grandma's legacy prevails through our island, we must first acknowledge her hard work and dedication, challenge ourselves to uphold her legacy to a higher standard, and progress in life with values and morals that have been paved and proven from her years of service to the island. In closing, passing the bill today will be an honor to my grandma and insurance to me that her legacy will forever live on this island. Thank you for your time and consideration. I'd like to also read another uh, testimony from my cousin, Casey. Thank you for taking the time to consider bill number 332-34, to name the Sinahania Central Precinct after my grandmother, Conception Connie Balahaja Duenas. Connie Duenas is unequivocally the most compassionate and altruistic person I've ever met. She was a strong and resilient woman that lived with immense vitality. She's a role to me as, she's a role model to me for as long as I live because she taught me important lessons in leading a meaningful life. Leading a meaningful life was always more than having money or luxuries, because she gave those away to others in need. Connie Duane is an example of a meaningful life being fostered through providing for others and benefiting one's community. It is about making a difference that sticks around, that creates opportunity for women in places where there are virtually none that provides advocacy for those suffering from domestic violence, and one that leaves a positive impact on every person 
one comes in contact with. I hope that whenever her name is seen, it serves as a reminder that we could all be a little better, give a little more, judge a little less, and live a full life regardless of our circumstances. If you had the opportunity to meet Connie, I don't need to tell you any of these because you already know exactly what I mean. However, what would you wanted, what would you want to know in my deepest gratitude for you honoring my grandmother? She's my favorite person. I'm ecstatic that others see her value just as I do. Sincerely, Casey Sivalaski. This is another testimony from my cousin Shireen Matsunani. I spoke to my grandmother with the utmost respect. I live life admiring a woman that looked upon as one of my role models, a selfless being in a world where corruption is all she saw every day. However, she prevailed amongst the rest. She taught times of war, sacrifice, hardship, people at their worst, and she still saw the best in life regardless of the situation. Connie Duenas was a very ambitious woman who I learned from by watching and observing the knowledge she had put in front of me. She always said, give it up to God, my girl, and everything will be okay. This was a woman who saw no boundaries. When my grandmother set out to do something, she did it. And if she could not achieve it, she tried again. She became the first policewoman in a time where men were the predominant ones. Her thought was, I want to be a police officer and no one's gonna stop me. She told stories of how she lived in a man's world, but if I wanted something bad enough, then I could achieve it no matter what society says. I grew up serving multiple senators and governors with my grandparents. I remember when I was young and she had headaches, she would give me three hours and we are going to serve our governor and our people of Guam. She said that every person counts and they, they matter. When I was in middle school, my grandmother became vice mayor and soon enough mayor. She ran her village with pride. The people reacted to her presence and no matter what she put others before herself. I truly miss that wonderful woman. Every day I miss her more, but her memory lives on with all the lives that she has touched, her legacy within her family, and I for one am honored to try to live up to her big shoes in hopes to one day fulfill them. Sincerely, C. Shireen Matanana. Thank you, Ms. Duenas. I'd also like to uh, recognize Senator Lee for being present. Thank you. Mr. Cruz? I'll turn it on, right? Half of these, uh, Senator Nelson and members of the committee. My name is Harold Cruz. I'm here to testify in favor of Bill 332-34. Uh, as a veteran and law enforcement officer, uh, former police officer, this is a great day for our men and women who wear, the, who wear the shield. It honors a pioneer in the law enforcement community. This is a great day for our island and region where we were once, and to some degree still are, a matrilineal society, where the mother is the center of our family and our society. There could be no greater tribute to all women and, all women and women in uniform than to bring their praises for generations following, following their leaving this earth. Uh, I'm also here to uh, acknowledge uh, a special Agent John Duenas, who is Connie's son. Uh, John, could you stand up? Uh, John and uh, myself, and Major Manny Chong here, and Captain uh, Cod Codwell, we all uh, attended the 29th Police Cycle Academy together, and uh, it just shows, uh, you know, uh, how it ran in the, in the Duenas' blood where uh, Connie was well respected and, and, and her kids uh, went on to uh, fulfill even her, her dreams. Uh, so I'm here uh, in support of the legislation and I ask the committee to uh, wholeheartedly uh, support and pass this legislation. Sidhu's Masi. Hafidi and good afternoon. Madam Chairwoman Nelson, Honorable Senators present, Senator Lee, Senator Castro, Senator San Augustine, Speaker Terlahi. My name is Rico Chrysostomo. I am a student of the University of Guam. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to present a testimony on behalf of former Senator and Chief of Police Frank Isazaki in support of Bill 332-34-COR. It reads, I am writing this letter in support of Bill Number 332-34-COR 
which was introduced by Senator Will Castro relative to the naming and dedicating the Sinahanya Central Precinct as the Lieutenant Conception Connie Balahaja Duenas Police Station. Connie was a police leader during an era when women were not universally accepted as cops. Women had to prove themselves every day that they could work in a man's world. Women were often relegated to administrative or jail duties and were not allowed to work like regular cops. She was a trailblazer. Connie persevered and opened the door for other women. Connie was one of five lady cops when I joined the Guam Department of Public Safety in 1971. She found a way to endure in a man's world and successfully rose in the ranks. People often forget just how difficult it was for a woman to succeed in law enforcement. Connie was always very professional. I don't remember ever hearing a rude or disrespectful word from her. She contributed, made rank, and retired as a police lieutenant. A few years ago, I wrote about the three tough cookies from the Guam Parole Board. Connie was a member of the board along with Soledad Dot Chargaloff and Michelle Titano. The three musketeers wanted the best for our island and worked diligently to hear applicants for parole. They held parolees accountable and made the difficult decisions whether to approve or deny parole. They revoked privileges to, of those who failed to comply with the law. Connie served honorably as mayor and vice mayor for the village of Timuning. She served village with distinction. People remembered her as the compassionate lady who was always approachable and willing to help. As founder and president of Victim Advocates Reaching Out, Connie helped victims of family violence and sexual assault. She also had vision and followed it for the greater good. She volunteered her time to her community because she truly cared. Above all, Connie was a wife, mother, and grandmother. Her husband Juan and her children, Kathy Solovsky, Eleanor Legaspi, Yvonne Arceo, and John Dewingis collectively serve our community. Please honor Connie and her public servant family by naming the newest police station in her honor. Signed, Frank Suzaki, former senator and chief of police. We humbly ask Imine Trentai Quachu na Ilesilatura in Guahan to support this bill. Sisus Masi. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to give testimony? Huh? Okay. Uh, I will open it up if anyone has questions on the panel. Any, sta any statements you'd like to make on behalf of the bill? Yes. Uh, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. You know, um, folks, it's kind of hard to follow uh, all the testimony that was given. I know Auntie Connie, Auntie Connie's my auntie, and I know what it feels like, because as the four of you identified yourself out of the 29 cycle, I graduated on the 19th cycle. When I was going in, she was going out. And I'd always meet her in Tumuni, and she'd always say, boy, I was on a police bike. And you know what, Auntie Connie, being asked by Senator Castro to co-sponsor this bill, is it, it is with great honor. And I know that the police department uh, honors her. She's done great, great work in, in the parole office. I see the chief parole officer here. And, and you know what, this is, this is one of the buildings that uh, I'm very happy to, to see it come to, to fruit. In, in April of next year. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Chair.
And I, I also want to just thank you all so much for attending today and for giving us your feedback on this bill and for giving us even more insight um, to Auntie Connie's life and all the wonderful things that she, she did while she was here for our island and our people. I think I really want to just highlight the opportunity that she created for all of the people in our community, but especially for women in our community, for stepping forward and being that trailblazer. Um, we had the opportunity to hear from her um, as a member of the parole board, and that's kind of how I became familiar with her name and familiar with her children and the legacy that she continues to leave through their service and the service of the, the, the rest of their family. But it's also very fitting, the idea of this bill, because she really did serve the people of Guam and just a tremendous advocate, especially for those who are suffering in our community. And we want to ensure that the police force is one that works with our community, that people feel comfortable reaching out to. Um, one of the testimonies had indicated that she really provided advocacy for those who are suffering, suffering from violence, suffering from you know vic being a victim of crime, and that's so important. Um, also, the manner in which she conducted herself both as a police officer and pretty much every single role that she held um, after that as a mayor. Um, just a very positive and very professional individual. And I just want to say, I want to take the opportunity to say that it was challenging for me as a legislative secretary to have to read the resolution during her state funeral because I was just so moved by all of the great work that she had done. And we are all very cognizant that we are here in these positions because of the trailblazers that came before us in our community. And so that really resonates with me. I'm very supportive of this bill. But again, it's very important for us to hear feedback from the community um, with regard to her service and to just give us even more reasons to support this measure. measure. So I want to thank the chairwoman and, and thank the authors of this bill, but most especially thank you all for coming out and for all of the people who've submitted testimony. We have um, quite a bit of testimony that actually hasn't been read into the record yet, so we'll be sure to review this as well. Sujus Masi. Thank you. Uh, I believe uh, there is also another individual that would like to give testimony, so we'll call you up at this time. Um, Ms. Michelle Titano? Yes, yes, Ms. Uh, Tanoya. Can I, can I just acknowledge one thing? The presence of the one um, daughter, um, Miss Yvonne, who's here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she's the baby. She's the one that I read the testimony on uh, her behalf. Thank you very much. Would you like to come forward and just give oral testimony? No? Okay. Ms. Titano? Half a day. Ready or? Okay. Thank you so much. Half a day. Um, honorable Senators, nice to see you all today. Um, and thank you for your patience with my timing. Um, I, I just want to say Magavnaha Ani to all of you, and I wanted to um, thank uh, Senator Will Castro for um, authoring uh, the, this bill, um, naming and dedicating Sanhanya Central. Uh, con Central Precinct as the Lieutenant Con Conception Connie Balahaja Duenas Police Station. Um, also, thanks to uh, Joe, Senator Joe St. Augustine for supporting it, sir. Um, this is very near and dear to my heart uh, as uh, and our, auntie, our beloved Auntie Connie, uh, now residing in heaven, was very near and dear uh, to me and to a lot of people. For 11 years, Connie and I diligently served on the Guam Parole Board. She actually served about maybe 16 years. She was faithful to fulfill her duties for every hearing that, was, that the board conducted. Even when she was slightly ill, she would say, Michelle, pick me up. And of course, she cannot say no to Auntie Connie, right? So we would go, I would go and pick her up. And before we would leave her, her house, 
either one of us would, dry, would grab each other's hand and then we would say a prayer to our Heavenly Father asking him, bless, thanking him for our families, the parole board, other members, the parole officers, and for the work asking the Lord wisdom to give us that for the hearing of the day. And, and then we would go off. You know, she was a very pioneering lady, and I'm sure maybe this was mentioned in, in one of the other previous testimonies today, but she was the first woman to make a lieutenant, uh, to rank as lieutenant for the Guam Police Department before retiring in 1978. And I could tell you many, many more stories about Auntie Connie, but we would be here for a week. <laughs> Um, but and uh, one of the uh, things I also appreciated was Governor Calvo in his speeches when he would refer to Auntie Connie he would say you know Auntie Connie da 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 and her sidekick Michelle so <laughs> that was my uh, I guess affection uh, for for that particular time between Governor and Auntie Connie they too had a long relationship so you know, I miss her very much. She was a parole board chair. She was my mentor, my confidant, my friend and sister. And I love, and I love her family and we support her family as well. And uh, her heart, her win wonderful memories would live on in our hearts, in my heart. And it would do, bestow a great, great honor to her, her legacy and the many, many things um, I'm sure you've heard of earlier that she did for her community and we would really honor her by the passage of this bill. So please, I humbly ask for your support of that. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Tejno. Is there anyone else that would like to give oral testimony? Okay. Uh, speaker, would you like to say something? I want to thank everyone for their testimony today and uh, I, I to agree that it's very fitting that this building be named and uh, because of what she has given to all of us to the community of Guam and um, she gave and she cared it was very apparent that she was a caring person from the choice of career from day one in her career all the way to her very last day she served on that parole board and um, was willing to come down here and testify and despite illness or anything she if it was for somebody to take care of she was she was going to be there but i i also want to say that i think you know going forward it's really um i'm so happy to hear the police chief say this will be she is an inspiration for other women in the police department and that she has um allowed for networking among women in the police department and among police officers everywhere and I think that's so very important for them going forward and for all of our community. And, and I'm, I'm very um, happy that we are able to do something like this to honor her and also going forward to create and remind everyone an inspiration uh, that we can, you know, we need those in our lives in order to continue public service. And so I'm very grateful that we have such a person as Antikani. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Um, I'll just say a couple words and then uh, Senator Castro will close. I just want to thank uh, the family for their continued sacrifice uh, to support their mother and what they did. Uh, I know it wasn't easy being a daughter of a public servant or a grandchild of a public servant. <laughs> um, but no, it, it was really a beacon of light that the community needs. Uh, really, uh, Ms. Mrs. Duenas was also a, a center for hope for people and, and that is the most important thing, really reminding us of our, of our culture, who we are as a people, and to always be willing to give no matter, um, no matter the inconvenience or, or sacrifice, she didn't question, um, you know, it was, she, she wasn't prejudiced, she gave freely and she gave to everyone equally. So uh, really that is something that uh, I, I respect and really ins is, inspires me as well. So. And thank you for the family for, and the grandchildren for your testimony. That was very moving. And thank you for enduring a lot of the errand you had to go on. But I'm sure it was a blessing in disguise, no? <laughs> uh, Senator Castro, would you like to close? Thank you, Chair. I think everyone said almost everything that needed to be said about her. 
I just want to thank the family for the tremendous privilege to be a part of that legacy. Again, um, well, Michelle started us off with a, an emotional stretch, so that, that's all I have to contribute this time. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, thank you very much, Senator Castro. It is now 3.45 p.m. This exhausts our, our agenda for the public hearing. Thank you very much to the Duenas family, and have a good day. God bless you.